we hired a dog trainer for Willow. Huh, baby girl? Dang. My main reasoning behind hiring a dog trainer was Willow's resource guarding with other dogs. Um, it wasn't that big of a deal when Willow was the only dog in our house, but getting Rue, the new my roommate's new puppy, um, has really brought out the worst in Willow, and I don't want Willow to ever feel like she needs to guard any kind of food or toy or her bed or anything, and I don't want to see that aggressive side of her at all. Um, so I decided to hire a trainer. It's a bit of an investment, but it's totally worth it. And being that we are able to make money because of Willow, I, I just thought there was no reason not to spend that money on making her the best dog that she can be. So of course I was a little nervous hiring a trainer. I didn't know what to expect. I honestly wasn't even sure what kind of technique she would be bringing. I knew it wasn't going to be negative, you know, using shock collars or anything like that, but I, I just assumed it was going to be positive reinforcement training, which doesn't always work with Willow. So I was really pleasantly surprised that Willow did a 180 after the first training session. I also worry with trainers because of course they're teaching the humans basically how to teach the dogs. It's really about teaching me how to handle Willow, not teaching Willow how to be a dog. Um, I was worried that it was going to be a lot of work for me and that it was just going to be someone coming in here and basically telling me what I could have Googled or YouTubed. Um, and luckily it wasn't like that at all. So, so like I said earlier, this training technique is not positive reinforcement, which positive reinforcement is giving the dog the treat every time they do something correct, um, which is a great way of training, but it doesn't work for me because Willow is so smart that she knows when I have a treat and when I don't. So when I don't have a treat, she's not gonna listen to me. Come here. Come. Willow, come. Willow, come. Come. Willow, come. Hello, can you wave? Down? Over? Over? No. Over? Over? Shake? <laughs> Sit up. Up. Hello, up. Sit. Shake? Other paw? Other paw? Hello. <laughs> Over, 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 all the way over, good girl. The basis around our trainer's teachings is body language and tone of voice. And it's very based on the way that animals and dogs specifically communicate with each other. She started by showing us a video of a mom golden retriever um, being let in to where her puppies were being kept to feed them, but the puppies were going crazy. They were super excited. They were hyper. They were jumping all around there, barking, whining. And what the mom did was she turned and growled at all of them and they all stopped. And when one of them would start getting all jumpy again, she growled at them and they'd stop. And then the puppies quickly, so quickly learned that they need to be calm and then the mom finally laid down and they could calmly walk up to her and feed. And this is how dogs communicate with each other. They don't know all of our vocabulary. They don't know English, Spanish, French, what have you. Um, they may in their lifetime know 10 to 20 words of English, but it's really about the tone in your voice um, and not about what you're saying. So we've only just started our dog training, but I can already tell you that the key to training your dog is the three B's. Boundaries, body language, and ba. So the first B, boundaries, is all about giving your pet boundaries so that they don't feel that they are at the same level as you. Owner, dog, you're the alpha, they follow what you say. This also helps Ha, 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 ha.
This also helps in establishing your dog's trust in you. So if your dog feels that they can trust you and that you're gonna be the caretaker of every situation, they're not going to go after other dogs, they're not going to attack people that come into your house. Um, for example, if you have a dog that's super scared and they always bark and you're afraid of them attacking a new person in your home, if you establish that dominance and you go and you tell them that it's okay, I know this person, you can calm down because I am in control of the situation, they don't feel that they have to be in control. The first boundary that was put in place was the couch. The dogs are not allowed to just jump up on the couch whenever they please. Um, they're allowed up on the couch when we allow them on the couch. They have to learn how to respect our stuff. So if they want on the couch, they have to be invited onto the couch and not just jump up on the couch whenever they want. The dogs did take advantage of the couch a lot. They would play on it and roughhouse and be on top of me, jumping on me. And so we are setting a boundary so that that's not okay. Just like you would do with kids when you teach them not to jump on the couch, not to ruin the furniture, etc. Another boundary she wanted to put into place was not allowing the dogs to sleep on the beds with us because letting them in your bed makes them feel that they are at the same level as you. So again, the respect is not necessarily there. But I can't help but let Willow sleep in my bed with me. I love when Willow sleeps with me. I cherish the moments when she cuddles with me. So that part has been hard. I'm still not sure if I'm going to implement that rule yet. The trainer did say that it's up to me whether or not I want to implement these boundaries. So I'm going to try to leave out the not sleeping with me aspect for now. And if it becomes a problem, then we will be um, keeping Willow off of my bed for a few months maybe, but not forever. The next B is body language. Dogs communicate so much through their body language, their tails, their ears, their stance, and they don't take us seriously when we're sitting down and yelling at them. You have to stand up, be erect, and show them that you mean business. Um, try correcting your dog from the couch. They're not gonna take you seriously, but if you stand right up off the couch and get close to them, then they're gonna start taking you seriously and they're most likely going to listen to you much more easily. Like I said before, the third B is ba. So ba, B-A-H-H-H, -H -H, is the sound that you make in order to get your dog to listen to you and respect you. Um, it comes from the diaphragm. It is supposed to be a growl. And it kind of sounds like when you're sitting in traffic and you're frustrated and you say, ugh. I'm so bad at it. I don't know. I'm so inconsistent. So that's one of the main things that I'm working on is getting that sound down and it's hard. You try doing it. That is a sound that dogs use to communicate with each other. Not, not that sound exactly, but, and that's the sound when Willow's resource guarding and she turns to Rue and shows her teeth and makes that scary growl noise. That's when Rue knows she needs to back up and Rue slowly learns not to come near Willow when she's eating. Not that we want that to happen, but um, it's the same thing with humans and it's been working so nicely. For example, just learning that word, I took Willow to work the next day and anytime Willow was on a leash next to me, I just, whenever she would start pulling in front of me, I would yell, bah, and she would stop and get right next to me just with that word. And we had, had not had any leash training at all and she already knows that that means that, that I'm the boss and that she needs to follow me rather than her leading me. But as soon as our trainer walked in the door, she started using this sound with them and they would just listen instantly. We did this exercise where she left and came back in and rang the doorbell. And as soon as the dog started running to the door, I just turned to them and you know did that noise, bah! And they stopped and they stayed. And I opened the door, I could have left the door open for 10 minutes, they wouldn't have gone because they, they knew what that noise meant. 
and they listened. Um, the next step, if they're not listening after, and you've done the growl, you clap. You do the growl and the clap at the same time, and that that's an even more dramatic, I'm serious. Um, and then there's this other technique that if they're really not listening, um, you hide a squirt bottle behind your back and you just spray them kind of like on the butt. And it simulates what it would have been like if their mom um, nipped them on the butt actually. So the trainer actually had to do that to Willow at one point and Willow instantly, like she literally thought that she had been nipped, but it was just a spray from a squirt bottle. and. She hasn't done that behavior again since. It's been super helpful and I just do that growl and Willow is alert and listening to me and respecting me. So it's helped so much. So the three B's, boundaries, body language, and ba. And that's pretty much all we've learned. Um, I will keep you guys updated. It's helped a lot so far. I think my biggest challenge is getting that, uh, that growl noise right. And the boundary thing's a little tough too. Why do we have to poop in the middle of the road? Why?